All right, it's a little late, but back with the Ultimate Fighter 6 Episode 9 recap. Um, what to say about this episode? Well, we're into the second round. Um, the matchups are, I guess I'll get a rundown of the matchups really quick. Are Mac Danzig, John Klosky, uh, versus John Klosky. Troy Mandalonis versus Matt Arroyo. Um, George Sideropoulos versus Richie Hightower and Ben Saunders versus Tommy Spear. Um, so good, Matt Sarah didn't go with the Hughes versus Hughes plan. Uh, I think this way will actually have the same result. I think Tommy Spears loses and I think uh, Danzig wins. We saw Danzig did win. Um, they kept saying Kolosky was a better wrestler, but unfortunately, he's not that good of a wrestler, to be honest. Doesn't have any great wrestling pedigree. He's bigger and stronger, but he didn't manage to use it. As for the other fights, I'm taking Matt Arroyo to beat Tra Troy Mandalonas. Um, I could see Mandalonas winning it because that man has freaking rocks for hands and if he touches your chin, you are likely going down. Um, if he can do that, but I think Arroyo has more of the skills. He's a much better ground fighter. I think he takes Mandalonas down and taps him out. Um, High Tower Sideropolis. Um, you name it, Sideropolis has the advantage. I think he's the better wrestler. I think he's the better striker. I think he's the better jiu-jitsu guy. Needless to say. Then again, I think High Tower was outclassed against anyone as it may be Mandalonas, so I guess it's good to feed him to Sideropolis. Uh, next, we have Ben Saunders and Tommy Spear. Uh, ben Saunders is a much better striker than Tommy Spear. He's very lanky. He's got great reach. I think he'll pound him. I think he's also better on the ground. Not not so much. As, he's not a better wrestler because I think Tommy Spear and Billy Miles are probably the two best wrestlers on the show. Uh, and Tommy is really strong, but this doesn't change the fact that Ben Saunders is a better jiu-jitsu guy. I mean, he's out of American Top Team, which is a very very good camp. Okay. Moving onwards, uh, Mac Danzig decides he has to be more positive in life, um, which means being nice to everyone, which includes Bowman. That's good, because him hating on Bowman's got boring, because Bowman never did anything to deserve getting hated on. He was picked to be on the show, and he's on the show. Blame the producers. <laughs> um, now, Richie Hightower, ugh, okay, I'll be admit, that would probably be freaking out on that guy a little bit, but still. Uh, Richie Hightower does his big speech with Matt Hughes. Um, it's not a terribly good speech, and he maybe should have let Matt Arroyo handle the uh, talking part because um, Richie didn't do a very good job of it. I understand where he's coming from. You want Matt Hughes to have your be best interest. But look at it this way. Of course Hughes wants you to win because it makes him look better, and he needs that right about now. He needs to prove that it was his guys that he picked fucking up, not his coaching. Royal probably wins, but Hightower's going to get steamrolled anyways. But Still. Um, let's see what else was there. Uh, well, the, there was the fight, of course. Um, Koloski nails a nice kick, which is about the first kick I've seen him throw. And I've seen a couple of his fights from before the Ultimate Fighter too. Um, he was a guy I think a lot of people were forgetting. I actually think he's Sarah's fourth best chance to, or a third best chance to win behind George and Ben. I think he's, although Matt Arroyo is a better fighter, Matt Arroyo is also a legitimate 155 or not 170 or Klosky being a much larger guy, I thought he had a better shot. Nonetheless, he took on Danzig. I really think Ben and Sonoropoulos are the only two that I think I see beating Danzig. Tommy Spear I could see kind of lay and praying him, but Mac, Mac is just, I mean, he's got such well-rounded skills. He's hard to take down as Koloski found out. He's got a great ground game. He, he's a pr very good striker. Um, he's, I think he doesn't win this season. I'm finally changing. I'm finally, I'm, I'm digging around, finding George Sauteropoulos' fights, and I think it'll be Sauteropoulos because not so much that he's better than Danzig, because I don't think he is better than Danzig. I think Danzig is slightly more skilled, but he's bigger and stronger and a legitimate 170-pound 70 pound fighter, whereas Danzig's a legitimate 155-er, and we saw what happened when he fought Hyotra Sakurai, Sadaropoulos, although Sadaropoulos is not Sakurai. I mean, really, Sakurai is a top five and always has been a top five lightweight. 
Although, if he could make 155, so I'm hard. I have a hard time figuring out where to classify him. I think we'll probably have to start classifying him at one. Well, K1's doing 160, so I guess uh, he could fight 160 there. But, um, anyways, he uh, basically beats him up pretty good. Good good clinch work. Uh, sinks in a rear naked choke when uh, Koloski's another failed takedown attempt doesn't work, and he ends up getting his back, uh, choking him. Um, Koloski, I think, panicked when the takedown started failing, and uh, I think he just wasn't prepared for it. I think it's 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 a lot like um, I mean the difference between Ben Saunders, um, Matt Danzig, and George Sadaropoulos is I think those three are ready for the UFC now mentally and with the skills they have. Whereas I don't think anyone else is at that point. I think Matt Arroyo definitely has to work on his striking game. If he can do that, actually, he'll be. I think he's ready. Uh, a guy like John Koloski, he's got to get. Uh, he's got to train a little more. Paul. Paul George F and him hold uh, other jobs, and uh, they can if they they have potential if they train full time. Because in the UFC, you've got to train full time. You can't can't be looking at another job, and which is why I think the UFC should definitely pay their fighters more, so that they don't need to work that second job. But that's fighter pay, and that's a topic for another day for me to rant about. Um, so what else was there? They did like the hummingbird touch, the hummingbird coming in to Max Feeder after he beat John Koloski and uh, decided he had no negativity in his life. And now uh, people trash on Danzig a lot, but that house will do strange things to you. And if you're surrounded by guys that you normally would not be surrounded by, yeah, it's it's gonna be annoying. Because I mean, I'm gonna say it right now, I probably will, would not mess well with uh, John Coppenheimer in the house or Richie Hightower in the house. I wouldn't have a problem with Bowman. I think that was more he just thought Bowman didn't belong. But Anyways, um, next episode we get two fights with the Mandalones versus Arroyo and we get Hightower versus Sauropolis and I think Mandalones Arroyo will be one of the better fights in the semifinals. A little more even. Um, uh, that's all for now. I'll be back. I don't know when I'll be back. I'm doing clinch talk this Friday. I'll be talking about IFL. Uh, what else would I be talking about? Maybe some Randy Couture stuff. Uh, breakdown of the UFC 78 card and the Strike Force uh, four man enter, one man leave tournaments or tournament. And um, yeah, whatever pops up between now and then. Later.